This scene is from Mansfield Park. It is when Fanny is home in Portsmouth and Henry Crawford comes down to visit her and they take a little walk after church. I have to say that this scene in particular helped give me a little bit of a soft spot for Henry Crawford, whom I actually kind of like more than Edmund, which is one of the reasons that I have problems with this book, which you'll hear about. But here we go, Henry and Fanny. The loveliness of the day and of the view, she felt like herself. They often stopped with the same sentiment and taste, leaning against the wall some minutes to look and admire. And considering he was not Edmund, Fanny could not but allow that he was sufficiently open to the charms of nature, and very well able to express his admiration. She had a few tender reveries now and then, which he could sometimes take advantage of, to look in her face without detection. And the result of these looks was that, though as bewitching as ever, her face was less blooming than it ought to be. She said she was very well, and did not like to be supposed otherwise, but take it all in all, he was convinced that her present residence could not be comfortable, and therefore could not be salutary for her, and he was growing anxious for her being again at Mansfield, where her own happiness and his in seeing her must be so much greater. "'You've been here a month, I think,' said he. "'No, not quite a month. It is only four weeks tomorrow since I left Mansfield.' You are a most accurate and honest reckoner. I should call that a month. I did not arrive here till Tuesday evening. And it is to be a two months visit, is not it? Yes, my uncle talked of two months. I suppose it will not be less. And how are you to be conveyed back again? Who comes for you? I do not know. I have heard nothing about it yet from my aunt. Perhaps I may be to stay longer. It may not be convenient for me to be fetched exactly at the two months end. After a moment's reflection, Mr. Crawford replied, I know, Mansfield. I know its ways. I know its faults towards you. I know the danger of your being so far forgotten as to have your comforts give way to the imaginary convenience of any single being in the family. I am aware that you may be left here week after week if Sir Thomas cannot settle everything for coming himself, or sending your aunt's maid for you, without involving the slightest alteration of the arrangements which you may have led down for the next quarter of a year. This will not do. Two months is an ample allowance. I should think six weeks quite enough. I am considering your sister's health, said he, addressing himself to Susan, which I think the confinement of Portsmouth unfavorable to. She requires constant air and exercise. When you know her as well as I do, I am sure you will agree that she does, and that she ought never to be long banished from the free air and liberty of the country. If, therefore, turning again to Fanny, you find yourself growing unwell, and any difficulties arise from your returning to Mansfield, without waiting for the two months to be ended. That must not be regarded as of any consequence. If you feel yourself at all less strong or comfortable than usual, and will only let my sister know it, give her only the slightest hint, she and I will immediately come down and take you back to Mansfield. You know the ease and the pleasure with which this would be done. You know all that would be felt on the occasion. Fanny thanked him, but tried to laugh it off. I am perfectly serious, he replied, as you perfectly know. And I hope you will not be cruelly concealing any tendency to indisposition. Indeed, you shall not. It shall not be in your power. For so long only as you positively say in every letter to Mary, I am well, and I know you cannot speak or write a falsehood, so long only shall you be considered as well. Fanny thanked him again, but was affected and distressed to a degree that made it impossible for her to say much, or even to be certain of what she ought to say. This was towards the close of their walk. He attended them to the last, and left them only at the door of their own house, when he knew them to be going to dinner, and therefore pretended to be waited for elsewhere. "'I wish you were not so tired,' said he, still detaining Fanny after all the others were in the house. "'I wish I left you in stronger health. Is there anything I can do for you in town? I have half an idea of going into Norfolk again soon. I am not satisfied about Madison. I am sure he still means to impose on me if possible and get a cousin of his own into a certain mill, which I designed for somebody else. I must come to an understanding with him. I must make him know that I will not be tricked on the south side of Everingham any more than on the north, that I will be master of my own property. I was not explicit enough with him before. The mischief such a man does on an estate, both as to the credit of his employer and the welfare of the poor, is inconceivable. I have a great mind to go back into Norfolk directly, and put everything at once on such a footing as cannot be afterwards swerved from. Madison is a clever fellow. I do not wish to displace him, provided he does not try to displace me. But it would be simple to be duped by a man who has no right of creditor to dupe me. 
and worse than simple to let them give me a hard-hearted, griping fellow for a tenant, instead of an honest man to whom I have given half a promise already. Would not it be worse than simple? Shall I go? Do you advise it? I advise. You know very well what is right. Yes, when you give me your opinion, I always know what is right. Your judgment is my rule of right. Oh, no, do not say so. We have all a better guide in ourselves, if we would attend to it, than any other person can be. Goodbye. I wish you a pleasant journey tomorrow. Is there nothing I can do for you in town? Nothing. I am much obliged to you. Have you no message for anybody? My love to your sister, if you please. And when you see my cousin, my cousin Edmund, I wish you would be so good as to say that I suppose I shall soon hear from him. Certainly. And if he is lazy or negligent, I will write his excuses myself. He could say no more, for Fanny would no longer be detained. He pressed her hand, looked at her, and was gone. Mansfield Park, Henry.